I'm Lonnie Goldsmith, a producer here at the Jew Folk Podcast Network. And normally, I'm the person who's part of the show that is behind the scenes that you don't ever hear during a regular episode of Kumbahi Nene. But for this, the kickoff of season two, your regular host, Enzi Tanner, asked me to interview him about where he's been these last few months and what this new upcoming season of the show is going to look like. Enzi, thanks for having me on your show to interview you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> hey, y'all, welcome back. This is NZ with Kuba Hineni, a podcast on intersectionality more than skin deep. I've been gone for a few months, and so we're going to do something different, as you heard Lonnie already. Lonnie Goldsmith will be interviewing me and talking about um, where I've been and what's up next. Thank you, and well, welcome, Lonnie. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to... To, to produce and edit and listen to the interviews and the podcast as they normally have happened through the first season of Kumba Hineni, but it's fun to be back on to help launch season two. Um, so I guess before we get into what season two looks like, you know, I sort of, you know, when we've been talking about getting this going again, I sort of jokingly was calling it the what you did on your summer vacation kind of, mm-hmm. but it was anything but a vacation, wasn't it? <laughs> like you've been awfully busy. busy these last few months yeah no i've been i've been really busy uh i took time off because i took a job at ben the Ark as a national organizer um and so it's been really busy i mean it, it's there's been a lot going on um as well as still trying to do my business and still trying to do um all the other things but realizing particularly with work that i needed to take a little break to kind of get myself um situated in understanding this new this new job um which has just been really incredible and an amazing opportunity to work with folks across the country really um around a lot of things but i mean and that's you know the thing that i it's been a while for me since i've had that kind of job transition it's you kind of forget i think just how overwhelming that can be, even if you're sort of staying within the same field, uh, generally speaking, that you've always been in, that kind of transition can be really challenging for Yeah, I mean, and, and it's it's the the reality, right, the difference between a hyper-local and a national mm-hmm. context, and, and the, the, the needing of both of them, um, and being very mindful of, of that, and I will be honest, I've been really thankful and grateful for um, the grassroots and the different types of organizing that we have here um, in the Twin Cities. I've I've really come to appreciate the relationship um, and relationships that we have and try to develop with other other folks. So for people who may be catching up now or who haven't been listening from the beginning, first of all, feel free to catch up. Second of all, you, you and I first started you know, talking about the show when you were working for Jewish Community Action, which is the Minneapolis and St. Paul Jewish social action, social justice uh, organization. Since then, you've moved to Bend the Ark. For people who don't know that, what is Bend the Ark? Yeah, so Bend the Ark is a national Jewish organization that um, really work to move progressive Jews. Right now, we're... um, One of the things I'm really excited about is the BREATHE Act, and we're working really with the Jewish community to look at what does it mean to divest from systems um, that harm us and invest in systems that heal us. Um, And so, like I said, Ben the Ark is really, it's a newer organization. And naming that the the Trump years and the, so 2016 to 2020, it's when it really got organizing. And so um, as far as an organizer, we organize chapters across the country, um, helping them with uh, campaigns. Well, I mean, it's great. And, you know, obviously for people who who are familiar with JCA, it's been around now 27. 27? Oh, that must be it. 27 years. I think we're both saying that. So let's, let's assume that's correct. And... It's it's interesting to see sort of, uh, you know, you've got the, the experience of having worked for a smaller local organization that's been around for quite a long time going to a larger organization that hasn't been around nearly as long. So you bring a, a, a sort of interesting skill set and perspective, I would imagine, to that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 it and I would say also, it's, it's that was my first, I mean, organizing with JCA was my first time organizing 
um, and doing any type of paid job outside of social work. Mm. Okay. And outside of training. So let's, we're not including sure. trainings and sure, facilitation sure. in that group. But um, And so for me, I, I would say that one, not only the like perspective, but also really grateful that I started from a local context. Um, because for me, it's important to understand, particularly as a person who supports national core leaders and folks in different states and cities, um, really the importance of um, those who are local and the folks who are on the ground um, and those most impacted doing the work um, is really essential and not getting directives from me, who is in Minneapolis, right. while the other chapters that I work with are in different um, are in different cities. So it's a different, um, it's just a different perspective. And I, I will name that, and, and this was, this has always been the same. My passion is around abolition and community safety. And so um, I'm aware that I'm. I, I'm learning a lot about campaigns and political campaigns and legislation, um, and I, I never thought I would. And um, it's a, it's a that that's within itself is a huge difference um, for me. And, and that that's been right since I started at JCA. It's it just isn't doing direct service work. I'm not doing social work anymore. Right. Ish. Well, I mean, I think there's certainly a piece of like your your social work skill set certainly that there's a carryover to. Yeah, yeah, and I could I could I mean there are organizers who are social there's social workers who are community organizers. Mm-hmm. So I mean I'm, um, and that's the thing right. It's about shifting our perspective from how we see things and how we perceive, um, what is and what isn't right. Like I I'm mindful that like for me I have I oftentimes unintentionally and I think this is all of us have a very narrow understanding of what anything is like in general like we. Um, when we think of work, uh, we modify and define what work is um, in ways that may not include and, and, and involve actually all of what work is. And so, like, I remember I actually just did a training with some youth workers. And I remember when I was doing youth work a while ago, a little over a decade ago, um, and really being, I, at that point, I remember being really clear that I was not a social worker, I was a youth worker. Um, and, and that was my my role. Um, and so I think really it's not that I don't do social work anymore, it's that it is not in the traditional ways in which we have seen it. Um, and I really believe that organizing is one way um, for social workers to make a, a, a huge difference in ways that we haven't been able to, because if we're focusing on the social work piece of it and the policies are so problematic, it doesn't really, um, we get stuck. And so I will also add that piece around like my understanding and my experience as a social worker as well as doing organizing. It gives me the the ability to stand back and even look at social workers and say, where where can we grow and learn and, and change and shift? Um, because all fields have a lot of work to do um, but since I'm a social worker, I would say we have a lot of work as social workers um, to do. So, yeah, and I think that's probably an accurate lens. It feels like to look at, I mean, a lot of things. Just sort of the way the world has shifted, and how you know how what we do has become maybe slightly tweaked, shall mm-hmm. we say, and, and sort of our understandings of of what we do and how we how that work is reflected in the world mm-hmm. um, has changed, particularly, um, you know, it's hard to put a timetable on it. I mean, I think for me as a journalist, I think, you know, learning the field in the pre-internet age as I did, mm-hmm. I'll, you know, sort of date myself there a little bit, it is very, you know, what, what journalists today are coming up learning is very different than the way I learned the field. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think it's having to, adjust a little bit the way of doing business but the I mean, and, general ethos has to be sort of grounded in the same thing yeah i mean in, in many ways like i i don't know if I've, I've had this conversation with lots of people so you might have been one of them uh but part of this is right we're no longer talking about globalization and that was a long conversation like <laughs> for a very long time and so what's happening is we're aware of our worldview but as the world becomes well, our world is just drastically opened up it's not 
what it was even a decade ago. It's, we just have a very different perspective. And so it actually allows us to have a more nuanced understanding. And it allows for us to say, oh, you know what? This is where I've perceived it. And this is because everyone around me perceives it this way. But maybe there's a different way, right. um, which is... Just, no, yeah. and I think the, the the word you use there that I think is really interesting is nuance. Because I know one thing mm. that talk a lot about people with is that uh, nuance is dead or mm -hmm. certainly dying, unfortunately, and it makes it really hard to have substantive conversations on difficult things, difficult topics when you can't do it in a nuanced way. Yeah, it's it's important. I mean, especially even. Um, even when we do a collaboration and solidarity um, and a lot of different things, um, the nuance, you know, it's just that complex piece right around, there's always going to be outliers to what we're talking about and what we're doing. And there's also nuance that gives us a different way of understanding and seeing um, the ways in which things are. I, I, I'm not going to give an example because it's a hot topic and I'm just not going to touch that right no, now. No, 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 that's fine. Um, I mean, I think there are plenty of topics in, you know, across the spectrum of politics and social justice and society where it's even, you know, two sides of the same coin are mm -hmm. the, the, where you think people might be aligned. You find out that they're not. You find out that they're not because of sometimes just the dumbest reasons. I mean, and, and and sometimes, I mean, and, and that's the thing, right? It's navigating when folks are not aligned, what are the reasons and how much unaligned are they? And that's, like, with me, I've, I've uh, you know, during these five months, or not five months, that's a long time. It's a uh, long however, time. However long I've been gone, yeah. um, I've actually not been on Facebook as much either or social media. Um, and and that's not necessarily intentional. So, so and, and when I say I'm off social media, I'm just not on it as much as I normally have. It's, and what that means, though, is I missed, I don't know all the time what's going on like I used to know what's going on. Um, and also, I've had the time to think and to kind of look at different, um, kind of relook and re-examine at some of my thoughts and some of my values and beliefs. Uh, and also, I'm a person who's really, within the last few years, have really clear at, particularly with associates, um, I don't have the capacity to build a lot of intimate relationships. Mm. Um, and so I'm the type of person who I, I have to figure it out, right? But when the values are so unaligned, there's no need for me to be in a relationship with you. Um, and it's not, I'm not saying when you disagree with things, right? I'm saying that fundamental values. Um, if you can't see me as a human being, I don't think we can <laughs> engage in the conversation. Or if you are incapable of hearing feedback around harm done um, and unwilling to like do things after months, then I'm like, you know what? I, I, I don't need this. Um, and what I've noticed is without being on social media as much, um, it's easier to do that in your own personal life. It's mm -hmm. easier to, to actually have those conversations and figure out, okay, what's, what's going on here? Are we talking about two different things? Are we talking about the same thing? And it actually figure that out um, in ways that is not possible on paper. You cannot, or on internet, I guess that's not paper, but. <laughs> I, get what you, I get the point though. The point is well taken there, certainly. Um, so, you know, given the time you, you've been away from the pod and finding, you know, finding your way in this new job and, and, and all of that and sort of looking at things in a more nuanced way, this is sort of a good opportunity to talk a little bit about you know, as here we are in the season two kickoff of Kumbahi Nani, what sort of those, you know, threads look like as we sort of, uh, you know, in areas to explore for this new season? Yeah, yeah, there's, um, we're going to be exploring several things, but I'm going to just hit on a few main topics that um, we will be exploring. One will be newer divergence. Um, and at the last season, I talked a lot about being autistic and um, newer divergent. And I've, I've learned and looked at a lot of things as well as um, folks are just really exploring and learning who they are. And so we will kind of hit on that and touch about um, on those topics. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I will name, I'm also really excited about that because 
working in a new job, uh, being extremely neurodivergent, ADHD, and autistic, it um, it could be a challenge. Um, and I've learned and, and developed um, hopefully some newer skills and, and learning around that. Um, and the other topic, which I'm sure no one's surprised about, uh, is is abolition, community safety, um, and not really necessarily all the time abolition, but really community safety. How do we keep our community safe? But actually, more than that, um, what does it look like to divest from systems that harm us and invest in systems that heal us? Um, and that looks different in different ways. Um, and then finally, authenticity. How do we live our most authentic life? Um, and all of these are connected, right? Being um, neurodivergent and autistic, um, loving, abolition and community safety, and that's actually a part of me being autistic, which um, I, I very much love, which all involves trying to live my authentic life um, and learning that once you're able to embrace yourself, that involves having to be able to look at yourself with nuance um, because oftentimes the hardest people to forgive is ourselves. Um, and knowing that, that means we have to be able to look at ourselves and be able to say, where's the nuance at? Mm -hmm. what's happening even with myself um and so wanting to just give us grace with that even when when we're doing that while embracing ourselves and and there is such an you know obviously it's a show about intersectionality and it is not just that you as the host sit at many many different intersections as we've as we've talked about over you know you've talked about over season one we talked about when we first talked about launching the show and the other times i've gotten to interview you but all of these issues are ways that it's sort of the the Jewish community, you know, you know, many people in the Jewish community sit in many the intersections of many different mm -hmm. crossroads as well as it relates to these issues. Mm -hmm. and, and and for me, I think that's extremely important, right? Like I, I uh, community safety, you know, in abolition, for example, it is really hard sometimes for our community to see, um, particularly through an abolition lens, where we fit in at, or how this, even how we're most impacted by it, um, and happen to really reorient people um, to some of that. Um, and this is a space, these are places where, um, in addition to that, this is a place where, where conversations are being had already and sometimes in silos, which is um, very interesting sometimes. And just looking forward to, to bringing the conversation out more. And, and sometimes the problem is the silos are the worst place for these conversations to happen. Because yes, yes. We, we need more people to hear these conversations and like, I hope people listen to these and they may not agree with you, mm -hmm. but they're hopefully at least going to learn something new from the conversations that you have and the people that you're talking to in this area. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's my hope. Um, because, you know. Well, I am, I, I am really excited at the shape that this season is going to look like it takes we you know obviously we've got we got things sketched out and left room for things to <laughs> things to uh you know get tweaked as need be because sometimes news happens that stuff stuff pops up we got to talk yeah. about here but i am i i'm really excited i think this is a definitely sort of a you know, different way of looking at some really interesting topics that are that are nuanced and that are important to the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited about it and, um, yeah, just just really excited about it. Well, excellent. Well, Enzi, thanks for her. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks for letting me host your show for the week. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lonnie, for, for interviewing me. And again, y'all, thanks for listening to Kumba Hineni, a podcast of intersectionality. Till next time. Peace. Kumba Hineni, a podcast on intersectionality, more than just skin deep, is a part of the Jew Folk Podcast Network, a product of Jew Folk Inc. You can email the show at podcast at tcjewfolk.com. For more information, go to tcjewfolk.com slash podcast.